Hey guys, Sister Mare, and this is Out to Beast Guys. I myself am having a wonderful day. Hope you guys all are as well. Go ahead and jump forward, move on with facts. So, in between episodes, have not done too much. I went ahead and crafted up some bits of bobs for an initial automation day. The first uh, automation we're going to do today is going to be for Singularity, so we need to get that one done. We need a thousand twenty four of these puppies for the end of the pack, right? So, go down to here, probably zoom in and check out here. Yeah, we need a thousand twenty four that will end up having to submit here. And they actually take quite a lot to produce. So, need a matter condenser, which I've already made. You need a 64K or 256K storage component. I already have that. And then you have to pump in 256,000 items to produce one singularity. And we need 1,024. So, yeah, this is going to be our first automation. Then we'll probably get into the stables. Then possibly these end fibers, because we have to do them, I guess. We got to do end fibers. I guess, the, I guess this is the thing, but we'll get to that as well. But first off is going to be the singularities. I just need to figure out where we're going to uh, kind of set up here. I do have uh, everything we need to automate this. So we're going to be using a bunch of sinks, a bunch of blue transporters. I have that. I have this. A router to pull out the item. Then a whole bunch of upgrades. So let me find a spot. We'll set this up. And then we'll kind of move on from there, right? So yeah, singularity, automation, hype. Let's go ahead and get it done. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set up this automation here in this 5x5x3 five by five by hole. And it's actually underneath our sifting setup and our crate setup. I have to say, I really love this building. I'm going to be doing more buildings like this in time, too. This building turned out so nice. I actually really, really love this building. I love the, I love the sloping. But anyway, that is just me just gushing on my own work. But anyway, uh, down here, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the setup, right? So what we'll have here is a bunch of sinks. And there's going to be, I think, 12 of them in the end. So we'll have a kind of configuration like that. Then we'll have this. And then we'll have a matter condenser kind of placed in the center. And all the sinks are going to feed into the singular uh, matter condenser. And we're gonna have a lot of connections here. So that's kind of the plan. So the way we're gonna do this, where we can kind of maximize our connections, I guess to start off on the bottom, because that will be the hardest one to wire up here. So let's go ahead and get that one done first. Then we wanna go ahead and hunt down our fluid transporters. Go ahead and put one here, one here, one here, and one there. Then we want one on the center of the matter condenser. Probably go inside that, set it up. We need to have the 64K ME storage component or bigger, it could be 256 in there. Then we want to set this to a uh, singularity. You can see there, it's a 256,000 per item. So we need a lot of items in there to actually be able to produce this. We're gonna be doing a water, of course, but if we go ahead and right click that center block now, it's gonna start putting water in there. And it's not very fast right now. This is like the default speed. We're gonna go ahead and speed these all up as well. So we need these uh, speed tier twos and the efficiency tier twos. So that'll be how that works there. Then you just gotta like right click the outer ring of the transporters and you can actually apply these. So each one of them can take one of each. They can't take the processing ones, unfortunately, speed them up even more. Huh, that's a thing. I don't know if this one needs it, like the actual import one, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and add one either way. Now we go ahead and check this out. It's already flying up super fast. We'll do this to five more sides. So one side's done. <laughs> we got uh, five more sides to do. But you get the basic idea, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, get that all set up here and uh, kind of configured, right? So let's do that there. The next thing I should probably do is uh, do the insides first because these ones are actually the hardest ones to do. So let's actually cover this block with a whole bunch of these, right? So that should be good there. And they'll all be going to the input anyway. So we can just kind of get that out of the way. So that, that, this, and that. I usually do this with uh, integrated dynamics, but I don't think we need to in this pack at all. It just takes a lot more time to set up. It was my main thinking of uh, why I wasn't going to do it that way. Let's go ahead and uh, put you down, put you down, do this here. Is this uh, configuring all the actual cards uh, for integrated dynamics? It's kind of a pain. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that was my thinking. Anyway, let's put a sink here, sink here. I'm not going to worry about their placement, like directional as well. So it may be a little messy, but it is what it is. Quick and dirty. Let's do that. Then I guess we want to head over here, do this one, and then I guess we want this one and this one. So yeah, we should be good to actually set up the rest, right? So just go ahead and throw these ones down. Then I guess we'd want to go ahead and get these ones configured as well. <laughs> I guess uh, sped up. See there, as soon as you speed them up, that line there is going way faster than the other one. So it actually moves stuff way quicker like this. These things are sometimes buggy, the actual transporters, which was the last pack that we played. Was it stone block? Yeah, stone block. I had a duplication issue with this, but... I don't know if we're gonna have an issue with like that here. That, I guess that was on export, so we don't have to worry about that either way. But uh, hopefully not. Go ahead, go grab that. Set up another side. Fantastic. And this is just going to get faster and faster and faster as we go, right? So that's kind of the joy of this. Let's do this here. 
There you go. It's a little weird clicking the outside ring too, because there's like a GUI as well if you click on the outside ring to uh, check out like the upgrades and stuff and stuff like that that are inside of them. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just uh, it's not always working the way you want to. Actually, it doesn't say it right there. Add on. Yeah, we got the speeds in there. You grab the efficiencies, right? So we want efficiency, 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 efficiency. Then we want to do the center as well. Grab you and you. And already, how fast are we? Like, that's only three sides. And we already, yeah, look at that. We already almost have one. So not too bad at all. And we still got, I guess, three more sides to go. So let's go ahead and get it fully set up. See how fast this puppy goes. Because I think it's going to be going at a pretty good rate here. And there you go. This thing is all set up. I may go ahead and uh, set up a couple more of these. So may end up with like three is what I'm thinking. So three of these setups there. It really depends on how much time it takes me to finish the rest of the pack, I think, right? Because I think I'm getting one about one a minute, which is not too bad. I know people are going to say you can do faster with integrated dynamics because you could get more connections on a single condenser. But at the same time, for one, I want to do it a different way. And two, um, you have to go into every one of those interfaces and change the settings of the water levels. And this was just quick and to set and forget. So kind of the way I want to do it here. And it's just nice to do things differently anyway, right? So anyway, um, yeah, this is going to be the route I go with this. So I guess that's the thing. The way we're going to pull the items out of here too, I guess we'll just be with a router, right? So I have this one here, just a puller. So this is the MK2 here. Then we're just going to go ahead and uh, set up the card. I think we have to make sure we target the actual uh, condenser there. Then we should be able to put this on top here. No problem, actually, maybe. There you go. Then just go ahead and pump that in there. See there, it's just going to pull out the actual uh, singularities there. At which point, we can put them wherever we want, right? So it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and grab like an enter chest, I guess. Go ahead and grab enter. Do I have one in there? I do. Go ahead and grab that. And then we'll just use a transporter as well, just so we're still using transporters too. So we have the item ones, right? Do I want to pull in this one? I'd have to have a filter it. No, I'd rather use a uncolored enter chest, right? This one. Let's go ahead and grab that. Then we'll just go ahead and pop you here. I'll have to set up a drawer for that, but uh, that is not that big a deal. Pop it here and pop it here and just do that. And that should end up in there. Then I just need to, like I said, set up a drawer for that. And that takes care of that. That's all finished. That is our singularity automation. And like I said, I may go ahead and uh, set up two more of them. I might do that. Maybe not right now. Like I said, I'm going to watch how long it takes us to finish the rest of the pack. Because we still need to go to a whole bunch of planets. And we still need, what else do we have to do that's actually going to take any time here? So we have this one here. We got that one. That won't take any time. This one, that one takes a little bit of time. This one doesn't at all. These, I guess that's just set up. We have to do a little bit of cultism. Just got to get in a rough idea of how much time we have left. So I guess the only thing that's going to take any time is this and this. So yeah, I'll probably do two more setups of this just so it's done at a pretty good pace. And then we'll just call it uh, done there, right? And we have pretty much everything we need for this quest line, right? So singularities are getting done. We already have the Ender Dragon. Antimatter pellets, we have the Pure Crystals. The Ender Dragon predictions, we already have them. And we have the mechanisms all out of it as well. So yeah, this quest line is pretty much finished. We actually don't have much left to do now that I look at it. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is going to be a little bit of ours, actually. Not much of it. We do have to do a little bit of it, though. So let's go ahead and make uh, eight of these pedestals. Then we need uh, one of these cores. Let's grab that. And we need the enchanting apparatus as well. So I think that's pretty much everything right there. And that should be pretty much everything. So let's actually go ahead and head out here. We only need to do a couple crafting kind of rituals for this, right? So not much at all. So let's go ahead and grab the core. Put the apparatus up here for all that matters. Then we'll go ahead and uh, surround this puppy with a bunch of these uh, pedestals, just like that. Now the recipes we need to do, one of them is going to be a mage bloom. So let's actually go ahead and grab this seed here. Because we need to grow some stuff of that. But uh, we'll kind of cheat uh, getting this stuff really easily. Just like that. Go ahead and uh, put these on. Four of the pedestals here. Then I think you just use that there. Now I'll actually go ahead and craft that up for us. And that'll be one of the things we need here. To kind of progress with the kind of quest line, right? So we'll go ahead and get that done. Didn't think it took this long. Now it takes a couple seconds here. It is very well uh, animated, right? It looks really good. So another thing we need here is a Wixie charm. And I think it's the... Drink me charm. So we need these ones here. I think I'm gonna buy those as well. So over here, we got uh, this puppy. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's gonna be one we're gonna need in a bit. Let's go ahead and pull you out. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put in this one. There you go. And this one here has the trades I'm looking for. There's star bungles. Oh, we don't have drink me's. What do, you, what do you give a drink me? I forget. I might have to look in the book. I forget what you give the drink me to make him dance and drop his charm.
So I looked it up in the book there and figured out what we need here. But uh, I'm going to grab a couple of these uh, mob and prisma tools just so we can move some mobs around because we're going to need them for our ritual anyway. So I'll need uh, a sheep for sure. So I got that. I think I already have another sheep. I'm going to grab me a, another sheep. It doesn't matter. I think it just has to be like a pig or a sheep or a cow or something like that. That's going to be for the unstable tools there. Then we're going to need another one for one of these guys. Let's go ahead and grab him. Get him out of here so I can actually drop items on the ground. To get them to drop their charms, it actually requires you to throw a Wildenhorn. So I found it in the notebook here, right? So it says right there, Wildenhorn. So if I go ahead and throw one of those, I should actually get a charm out of him. Should start doing a little dance there. It's actually quite cute. And then you actually have your shard. So we have that now. Bought a couple of the Wixy ones as well, because we can just buy those ones. And the, uh, what is this here? Uh, what you call it? What was the other one there? This here, I bought a disc as well, because if you want to go ahead and actually make this thing, there's a reason I did it. Oh yeah, for the Totem of Undying, um, there's a trade. I'll show you in a couple minutes. There's a trade where we can actually buy that from the shitty, it was on this guy, the shitty wizard. Anyway, to make our next tome here, we'll go ahead and make the Wixy one first, I guess. So let's go actually go ahead and grab the Wixy Charm recipe here. This is the easy way to kind of get the items out of the kind of system without having to search for every one of them. So I'm just doing it this way. There you go. Then we should be able to take that stuff. It's probably going to be the shard last, right? So let's go ahead, do that. Uh, this, uh, that, and this here. And go ahead and right-click that one on there. So that'll handle one of the charms. And we need that, I think, down here somewhere. Yeah, we need that here. Then we need the uh, drink me as well. So let's go ahead and grab that. Probably pronouncing drink me completely wrong, but I'm not too concerned about that, to be honest. This one takes a bunch of stuff, mind you. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab that, that, that. That's, I don't have many fish either. <laughs> That's a thing. Anyway, that is good there. Go ahead and get the fish off for a second just so we can go ahead and uh, grab this here. So there's our charm. Then our fish will want back on there. This one's going to take all eight. None of these ones take any source either. So you don't need any of the uh, power source from the mod, right? Just kind of, just kind of, just do it this way, right? These ones don't take nothing. And anyway, we'll handle that one there. That'll be yet another one. And was there anything else we did right now? I don't know why I have that pinned. So we needed these three. We have them. We're going to have this one here. So that's good. And what was the last one I wanted? Oh, I want the uh, Starbuckle. Went ahead and bought myself one of the Starbuckle shards as well. So we're looking pretty good there. I should check the time too because at 12 o'clock midnight, we need to do a ritual. So I made this little clock block here from uh, Supplementaries. But it looks like we have a little bit of time. But anyway, that is that shard there. And this one's going to be to get us our Totem of Undying, I believe. So we head over here now and pull this puppy up. There you go. So this one is not needed anymore. Let's go ahead and grab the Shady Wizard. This one here has it as the first trade. It needs one of these artifacts, though. And that's why I needed that disc. So let's go to Art uh, Fact. So we can hunt that down here. And right there. Oh, was it any disc? Wait, was that really any disc? I guess it was, but that wasn't easy to get disc. I don't think I have any other discs, do I? I might have some. Now I have some more of these. I must have bought these at some point. But we do get these ones, right? From the uh, Pickling Trader, I think, right? So anyway, we could have done that either way. Guess I didn't need to buy that. But now we can actually buy a Totem of Dying, which I think means that is the last component I didn't really have for the Stable Division Sigil. Yeah, we just need the uh, actual Division Sign and the Unstable Blocks, at which point we can just craft the Stable Version, I believe, of the Blocks, of the Igus, I mean, and we should be good to go. Uh, what time is it? I need to kind of figure this out here. We're getting pretty close here. So what I probably will do is go ahead and uh, idle over here. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this little platform over here, ready to go. This is gonna be for our ritual. So we need to wait till 12 o'clock, like I said. It needs to be complete darkness. So that's kind of another thing we need to kind of have going for us. Then we need to have a line of redstone going around this thing, kind of like less. And then we need it to, like I said, complete dark. So. So I think it's uh, just about 12 o'clock here. We're going to uh, see if we can get this done. Hopefully we can. We have to be pretty quick with it. I don't know how much time we have, but it isn't a lot. So we go ahead and uh, put the mob down and do this. There you go, get a ritual. And I had the, oh, oh, I do, okay. I did have the sigil, the signs in my inventory. So, okay, good. So that's all it takes. That is the ritual there. I think you can do it up to, it's either 12.30 or one, at which point you can't do it anymore. You have to wait another day. So that is how that works and uh, we got it. So that actually handles that. That's actually really sweet. So the next part of this is, uh, I may actually kill myself here. Let's go ahead and grab this. Let's grab a crafting station real quick. I want to show you what happens if you do this wrong. So if you do this wrong, let's go ahead and grab this. Go 
go ahead and do this here. And I think there's a way of cheesing it too, but I'm not too worried about that. I want to show you how to do it the right way. So anyway, go ahead and grab that. Grab ourselves the diamonds. Let's go ahead and grab them. Sweet. Grab that. And go ahead and do this. And let's just make one and do it completely wrong. So basically when I craft this, right? So you put the diamond on the bottom blade and the iron on top. We have 200 ticks, right? To be able to do something with it. And you can't close your, your inventory. If you close the window and try to like submit it real quick inside the um, quest system, it's going to kill you. So you would kind of craft this. Notice it's going down, which is fine. When that hits zero, I'm going to blow up here. I'm well aware of it. But also if I close the window, right? Oh, we have a ton of hearts. It can't kill me. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I thought it was going to instantly kill me, but it, it, I think it's like one bar of health. So anyway, that is what happens. It blows things up and uh, yeah, makes a big noise there as well. So just to be aware of that, that is kind of how that functions. I don't think you could even use a crafting station, right? But you can use, I believe, refined storage to actually craft these as well. And I think that's a way of kind of cheesing it here. Like I said, we're going to do it the correct way, which is by getting the stable division sigil, which I think makes stable variants. Yeah, these ones here are the stable ones that won't blow up, right? So that's kind of the plan. To do that uh, should be really easy, actually. Let's go ahead and uh, pop this down again. Go ahead and do, we'd want 18, right? Go ahead, grab ourselves 18, just like that. And we'd want 18 of these as well. We're gonna do everything legit here. Let's go ahead and do that. Do you, you and you. Go ahead and grab that there. Then we just go ahead and pull that out. We've got lots of time, craft up our two blocks. And these ones don't blow up. These ones don't stack, mind you but they don't black, uh, blow up. So we're actually fine. That is the, I guess, proper way of doing it. And then we should be able to just go ahead and craft this and do that there. And now we have the stable one. At which point, I think we can just make whatever we want. I think we need to stack anyway. So let's grab some more iron and maybe some diamonds, just like that. Fantastic. And then we can just go ahead and do you, you, and you. And there you go, stable. We're good. Look, look, we did things the correct way. Didn't have to cheat at all. And we still got our stack of agates, right? Or is it two stacks? I can't remember. <laughs> have to go ahead and check. We need, uh, you know, just the one stack there. So that finishes that off. And now we have the creative reclamation chamber, which we're going to set up here in a second. So yeah, we're going to be using this actually, because we need to grow some of these mage blooms for the quest there, right? For this one right here, for the end fiber. And we need some pop chor uh, chorus fruit as well. So I figured we'd go ahead and set this up in, what should we call it here? Up chores. I guess we need the chores fruit in the phytogenic insulator, which can actually utilize this upgrade. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, set that up next. So I've gone ahead and made us our phytogenic. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pop it down right here and just do like quick and dirty automation because I won't be using this very long. And uh, I really just needed to get us uh, certain kind of plants, you know, in mass, right? So we'll just have it kind of set up in a way where I could just feed the chest and come back to it, right? So I'll end up having a chest up here, I suppose. Go ahead and uh, place that block again. Go ahead, grab ourselves a sink because this thing does take water, right? So we'll do that. Then we'll need ourselves a fluid pipe like this. And then we'll want to set the extract. Then probably spin the machine around once completely for luck. Then we'll just input for water here. In the top, we'll probably do a input output. Auto input, auto output. No, we want those both enabled. So that is good there. Then effectively, all we really need to do is go ahead and throw in the upgrades. So we have our uh, creative reclamation, right? So what this is going to do is going to make it so this here, this fight grow that I'm going to put in this catalyst slot is never going to get used. And this makes things grow in this much faster. So this is like a very strong fertilizer, right? And this was a little weird to make anyway in this pack. Usually you can get the niter dust or the niter uh, pretty much infinitely from your sifting setups in most pack or when you're just processing resources. But in this one, it's a little more work, right? To actually get the niter, I had to go ahead and run sandstone through a pulverizer, right? Yeah, right here. And went ahead and did this one. Then you go ahead and uh, get your niter. Then you go ahead and actually craft it up. So I thought that was a little odd because if you want to automate this machine early on, it would be very difficult. I guess you could use bone meal, but you wouldn't be able to automate the phyto in any easy way without like doing a, I guess, robust setup just for the phyto grow, which I thought was a little strange because there's such easy ways to grow plants, right? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pop that in there. That should actually start growing there. Then I had upgrades, right? Yeah, we're gonna use these ones. So let's do that and that. Go ahead and grab the uh, component upgrade as well. And that should actually start going pretty fast. And because we have the fight grow in there, I'm sorry, have the creative reclamation chamber, this thing's not getting used up at all. It's just going to last forever. And that's going to basically just output the mage balloon up here 
And yeah, just uh, do the stuff things. Also, you can't see it. I should do this for a second too. Let's uh, turn off this for a second. So during the step, every time it goes through the process, it actually puts the seed in the output slot. So that's why I have that on input output. So it'll pull the seed back in, right? So it's just pulling it back in for each cycle. And that'll handle that, right? And I think I'll probably want to do some of these as well. I'm just, just going to make sure I can actually handle this as well and see what we're going to get for the output because I need a good amount of this too, I believe. So let's go ahead and uh, check that out real quick. So that's fine there. Oh, it's going to get more of the flowers with this one. So the flowers do double on this one. They do not uh, double on the seeds, I guess, for the beige blooms, which is fine. That's not that big a deal. We'll just end up with a bunch of the tourist flowers in there as well. So I guess that's not too bad. But basically, I'm just going to let this run for a few minutes and then come back and uh, we go ahead and uh, finish off this quest here, right? The end fiber. So we needed, what do we see here? Oh, each one of these is four fibers. We don't even need many. So that's good. Then you get two per recipe. Then you need these here too, right? The pop chores fruit. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get this finished off here. What do we get for this one too? Oh, the creative spell book. I'm not really into the spells, man. I'm just, it doesn't matter which magic mod I'm doing. I'm just not really into spells. I'm just not that guy, right? But anyway, we're going to have a creative spell book here in a second. So I'm going to hit and try it out in another upgrade in here too. So I actually pulled out one of the Flux Linkage amplifiers and replaced it with this uh, processing upgrade. So the cyclical processing products may be transferred to input on process completion, completion right? Now I don't need to use in and out anymore, actually, on the actual configuration here. It's just output now. It's a straight output. So what's happening is the chorus flower goes through, it gets used to actually double up, right? So it's like a double up process of growing it and firing it inside the machine, then puts the seed back into that slot. So I don't have to worry about that anymore because I was having an issue when I was uh, doing these ones, right? So I was doing these ones and the flowers were actually ending up in the slot, right? <laughs> oh, because there's only one of these seeds and a whole bunch of flowers. And for a split second, there's nothing in the slot, right? But with this upgrade, that doesn't happen anymore. I don't have to worry about it. It's just gonna stay in there at all times and just grow this one plant. So way better way of doing it, way cleaner, and uh, quite happy that I tried that out. Either way, that is uh, that is good. So I went ahead and uh, finished off the quest line. I actually got myself the uh, Creative Spellbook, but uh, isn't that great, actually? You actually still need to have all the mana to cast the spells. I thought it was gonna be creative. I was gonna be able to just span spells all I wanted to, all willy-nilly. doesn't work like that. So I'm going to have to actually make myself a set of armor at some point that can actually regen our mana and uh, raise our max mana. Because right now I can't really cast anything. I was trying to make a lightning spell. Like right now this one is mage light. So I can just shoot lights, which are actually pretty cool, right? But I want to fry some chickens here and uh, I can't actually do that. So you open up the book. You have to set the hockey. It was set to C by default, but I had to change that. Um, yeah, I just have this one here. I was trying to do this one. I'll show you what I was trying to make because this book lets you do crazy spells, right? So I was doing lightning. And I was trying to do uh, Amplify. And then there's like Amplify 3 here. And that would be a lot of damage. I don't know how much damage it is, right? <laughs> but uh, that would be a lot of damage. Also, when you're making your first spell, make sure you name it and you hit the Create button there. But yeah, I don't have enough mana to do anything fun with this thing, unfortunately. So I guess uh, in between episodes, I'll try to get myself a set of armor. With, um, I don't even remember the enchants from ours, but there's like uh, ours enchants, right? So you go to ours... And then they should have some enchantments in here somewhere. Maybe they get mixed in with the vanilla ones. A lot of mods do that these days, right? You can't actually see their kind of personal enchants. I guess I'll figure it out in between episodes. But there's a chance I can make it... Oh, there they are. Yeah, mana regen. And then there's the mana boost, right? So the mana boost is the one that's going to make it so I have enough mana to actually cast these better spells. But I would need a whole set of armor with us. I wonder if the R's are armor. If that's like the only chance I could get on it. Because this so that would make getting those enchants really easy. Unless there's another way of crafting it with the mod. Well, I might do this. Yeah, maybe I do this. Make myself a good set of armor with uh, mana boost at the top level. I can't get that one. <laughs> so I can get it here, right? Oh, what's that? Backpack? No, that doesn't make any sense. You can't get it that way. Yeah, apparently you can't uh, just, just buy that one or craft it, I should say. You have to get, kind of get up to it, right? Either way, it doesn't really matter. I just want to shoot big lightning spells. And then I also wanted to do another one where I shot mobs up in the space, but we'll do that probably tomorrow instead. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's pretty cool. So in the next video, I guess, we'll go ahead and do the crystallized, uh, crystallized obsidian and the nether orbs. This one's actually a boss fight. We'll have to do our food too. Maybe we'll do that by myself. We already have this one on autocraft, at which point we're into this one here. I know some people have been asking too how to do these ones right here, these particular three. 
because you look them up, it doesn't look obvious how you actually get the um, the Blitz powder, Blizz powder, and the Basalis powder. But the way you actually get that is from in here, just so people who are wondering know, there's a quest line here where you actually have to go ahead and fight the Blazes. And as you fight the Blazes, you get free spawners. So this one is the, oh, don't do that. This one here is the Blizz. This one here is Basals. And this one would be the last one, whatever it is, uh, the Blitz. So that's actually how you do that. Then you can go ahead and farm that stuff up all willy nilly. Because otherwise, I don't know how you would get it, to be honest. Maybe some of the biomes they spawn in. But um, you'd have to find the specific biomes. Because I haven't seen one of those mobs in this pack. But definitely, definitely a thing. Yeah, so that's pretty good, right? We're making pretty good progress here. One thing I should do, too, is just submit that. And get rid of those. So I don't have to look at those anymore. Anyway, <laughs> that's cool. I think I maybe go ahead, actually, in this one here, though. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.